we have staffing, um, in other words, salaries, and we have three-year plan, and then we have another category. Uh, and if we have time, we'll, we'll use that to get back to any issues that board members would like to spend some more time on. Um, Ken, would you like to Give us a brief overview of the staffing. Sure. Um, that's the largest part of your budget, so it's the part of the budget that I want you to be most comfortable with. I know it's like 80% of the uh, $21 million. Um, that's where it is. So this year we're anticipating um, one and a half fewer total positions than we have right now because of some enrollment uh, declinement at Pond Cove, we can reduce one and a half teachers. The middle school and the high school are status quo as far as staffing goes, and we're not expecting <clears throat> any increases or decreases in our support staff. Um, the only unknown in that area is for special education. Um, we never know when we might have a need for a, an additional check or two. But the best way of doing that is just projecting current needs, and that's what we're doing. So that's sort of a two minute summary of where we are with staffing, but I'll be glad to. Uh, the other thing I should mention is that, you know, that line, you've heard me say this before, but that salary line um, would be much higher if it were not for the tentative agreement that we have with our teachers association. Um, it's usually about two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars more in a conventional year. But we've reached the tentative agreement <coughs> uh, with our teachers association which calls for a very, very modest salary increase this year. So thank you. Glad to answer any questions you have about staffing. So, do board members have questions about the staffing budget? I have a question. Just um, maybe just one of the schools could just walk us through uh, how staffing is determined in terms of what's the, the rationale and thought process. You know, target the class size just so the public could have a better understanding of um, how staffing is uh, determined or projected for, uh, for a particular school? Yeah, with, with most of the staffing needs, Michael, it's based upon enrollment projections. Um, you know, whatever those projections are indicating uh, determines the number of teachers we have. You know, the class size limitations that we have, and if we're reaching a point where we're going to be exceeding uh, class size limitations, then we would recommend additional staffing. Uh, and the opposite is true this year. You know, we've got an enrollment decline, so we can cut back uh, one and a half positions at Pond Cove. The other thing that I think drives um, school budgets and adds to that, um, that perception that, you know, the enrollment has been declining, but the staff is at the same level. Well, often, if you're waiting to add a position, you know, you do that when you have room in the budget to do it. Um, you know, if you, for example, if you wanted to add a, a literacy lead teacher at one of your schools and your enrollment declined, um, it would be a good opportunity, you know, to add that position you've been waiting for. The other thing that adds to that perception, uh, perception that um, you're adding staff and the enrollment's going down. I heard that a lot, especially when I met with town councilors. Um, that was a prevailing theme. Uh, but it's special education. Um, that's just um, causing not only Cape Elizabeth, but schools throughout the country to add ed techs and special education teachers. Um, there just seems to be a growing 
population of kids with severe learning challenges populated <coughs> our schools. And these kids require the type of individual educational plan that sometimes requires a, an ed tech for the full day. So um, it's just not a Cape Elizabeth. Um, we thought we were the only school system in Yarmouth that was experiencing that. But when you start looking at school system in Cumberland County, everybody's experiencing that that uh, same trend. So, though the enrollment has been going down, uh, those needs have been going up. David? I, I just like to add a couple of points to that because I've heard this every year. Uh, first of all, uh, you can have a decline in enrollment, but that doesn't translate into necessarily being able to cut a teacher or an ed tech. You, the enrollment spread out over 12 grades. If you lose six students and that's spread over 12 grades, you can't exactly, whatever percentage that is, cut that percentage of teachers because you'd be cutting off arms and legs of teachers rather than whole teachers. It has to drop to a certain level in a certain class before you're able to then combine it and then not go over the state mandated limits. The other thing is that, especially in a high school, to be the kind of school we want to be, we, we really want classes at the high end, like AP calculus or a, certain AP classes. And we also, as a public institution, want to have the, I don't know what it's called yet, but like high school diploma level. Those classes tend to be smaller, but you have to have them in a public school. First, so we can be one of the best schools in the state, and the latter because we have to serve, and rightfully so, every one of our students. So, that's it. Anyone else? Um, I just have a really quick question. And are we on to this, the, the area where you um, can you mention the Alcohol Parents Association leaders? Uh, um, so, half the tutorial services. $50 per day, is that $50 per tutor a day? Is that generous? That's what we're currently paying the tutor that's providing those services at Monco. Okay. And what is what's half day, four hours? That's, in a, that's a rate that she agreed to with the Monco Parents Association. Okay. So it's a, it's a rate that we couldn't, um, our, our ed techs are making more money than that. Uh -huh. and, uh, and of course, our teachers are making more money for that, so we can't run that program as efficiently as it's currently being run. We do have to find a solution to it because um, the Parents Association um, isn't interested in picking up that funding any longer. So, don't have a precise answer for you today about how we're going to do that. We do recognize that those kids need services, and we're going to have to figure out a way of providing those services. I mean, the other thing that I mentioned in my email to you is that um, even between now and the, and the end of the year, we're going to experience some un unanticipated changes. Uh, it usually happens every school year. Someone will decide at the last moment to retire, let us know, um, or someone will get a job someplace else, or someone will have to move. And when that happens, you know, it's like, it causes you to rethink how you're running that program, so you may decide to move something here that's not there, and it allows you to cover something like this. So, I mean, those are the kinds of things that I'm sure are going to happen between now and, uh, and June that will enable, you know, things to become rearranged. But the point I want to assure you is that those students who have uh, needs in mathematics in grades three and four, we're just not going to pretend like they suddenly don't exist. I mean, that's not a solution. We need to find a way of, of providing similar services. Okay. Can you expand on that a little bit as to why it is we, are, we have students in grades three and four that need tutoring? Is there um, an issue with our program that these folks, kids are falling through the cracks or is it can you expand a little bit? Sure. It's, it's just a desire to make sure that kids who aren't meeting the standards or they're not where we think they should be in mathematics are getting the kind of extra services they need. Um, I'm sure they've existed every year for the past hundred years, um, but I think schools in general are becoming much more savvy 
about how to provide kids with the individual support that they need in order to experience success. I mean, if you look behind the Achievement Center, which I think is the, sort of like the poster boy for that concept, I mean, it's just a tremendous asset to Cape Elizabeth High School. You know, kids from all different kinds of levels are able to access the Achievement Center and get the kind of support they need to probably reach to places that uh, years ago, without that sort of service, they didn't. So it's the same kind of thing with the math program. I think we're servicing right now 15 kids at each grade level. Total. Grade it's three. Yeah, it's just not very many. Right. Thank you. Okay. Can um, and those students are known about, and they're um, the program's known about and given to the math team, the math leads. Um, I think you are the math given to the math leads, and then they are looking at that need in the math department to, to make, um, to take care of that. Right. So it's not something we're throwing out without um, a plan, but we're, it's actually, it has been in the works for a while through um, the teaching and learning workshop and then work. Yeah, it's the same approach with literacy that we have, and we have the same sort of support for kids who are struggling. Um, with reading and writing issues. So if I, if I could just follow up with one more. So um, you've said that, that, that these kids with needs exist and that the needs will be met. And because you haven't put um, specific, any specific request around the, this need in the budget, I, what I am taking away is that you believe the, budget, the, the resources exist in the budget to address the need, but you said you're not exactly sure what the strategy will be yet, but that you don't think the, there need be any additional resources in the budget in order to address that need. Right, right. I mean, if you, I mean, if you needed a solution today, it would have to be a half-time ed tech um, for fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. But I'm not, you know, I'm not certain that that needs to be the plan we land on. You know, I think there's some other things that if uh, we have another month or two to figure out, um, might be even better than an ed tech. But, you know, <clears throat> that would be the plan as of this minute. But I, don't really, I really don't think we need that. Okay. Okay, just to make sure, is the tutorial services that are being provided by uh, Ponco Parents Association, is that, are those tutor tutorial services related to math or are those two separate? Are they the same issue? Is it, what the Parents Association is providing is just mathematics support for the kids in grades three and four. And then just one follow up. I know on, um, we have class size targets. David gave a great example. If you lose one student per grade, it doesn't mean you can reduce that position, but in some areas that are more volume related, if you're serving less lunches, you know, I assume you're driving, you know, are there areas we should expect if, you know, the enrollment continues to decline, that there's a higher correlation between staffing and, um, you know, the number of students? I mean, I just, you know, it's like food services, if you're serving less number of students, you know, other areas we could anticipate, um, you know, savings there if, if we continue to see enrollment declines? Yeah, but they probably won't be noticeable. You know, it's, it's not the type of enrollment decline that's going to cause you to, you know, take a bus off the road, for example. Uh, or you're going to be serving such fewer lunches that you can reduce one of the school nutrition workers. It's not that sort of decline. So it's, it's kind of like, um, You've been flying the plane with all the seats full, uh, but you still got to fly the plane with a few empty seats. So the costs are going to be pretty similar. Where the savings will come is with uh, you know reduction in staff. That's, you know, you're getting sick of me saying that. I know, but that's, that is where all the money is. So this year, for example, with one and a half fewer teachers, you know, that's a substantial savings in the salary line. Any other questions? I just had one more. Uh, Dominic's not here, but just 